Hello everyone. Right now we will see about the resuscitation of a polytrauma patient. How to resuscitate a polytrauma patient who is coming to the ER? What are the latest guidelines and the recent advances in resuscitation? As you know, trauma is the eighth leading cause of death in the world and it is the largest cause of death in the age group of between 5 to 29 years. In India, almost 1.5 lakh people die annually because of an RTA of the 4.5 lakh people who are getting injured. Is trauma death preventable? It is up to the government to initiate measures to prevent it. What as doctors, what we can do is to treat the patients as per protocols appropriately. So this is an average mortality rate of a patient with trauma. Among this, we can see road traffic accident constitute almost one third of the death of the occurring following in a trauma or patient coming to the ER. This is the classic trimodal death distribution that happens following trauma. This either immediate deaths or the early deaths or the late deaths. This immediate death usually happens within the first hour of trauma. The cause may be a rupture due to the damage to the blood vessels, major blood vessels or to the damage to the organs or the rupture of these organs. This death is almost not preventable. But it is these early deaths which happens around the two hours of uh, following trauma is preventable if the patient reaches the hospital and appropriate diagnosis and treatment is initiated. What are the possible causes of these early deaths? Say an extradural hematoma, a subdural hematoma, a pneumothorax or a hemothorax bleeding into the abdominal cavity. All these things are causes of these early deaths and it is preventable. It is late deaths which you can see happens after the second week and it peaks around the fourth week. The causes may be including the sepsis or the multi organ dysfunction syndrome. So again here if you treat up these patients uh, appropriately, these late deaths is also preventable. What is unique about trauma resuscitation? Trauma is the treatment is all about a team approach. You have to have a rapid focused and a structured approach. Treat the greatest threat to life first. You cannot treat the patient completely simul everything. So with the thing which is going to cause the death to the life of the patient, you should be treated first. Treatment is not withheld because of uncertainty in diagnosis. Suppose you are not sure whether the patient is uh, what is the cause of bleeding into the abdominal cavity. Again, a laparotomy is essential here. A history, detailed physical examination and the differential diagnosis, all these things takes a backseat in the management of trauma. So what are the goals in the management of trauma? First is a rapid, accurate and a physiological assessment. Simultaneously, you resuscitate, stabilize and monitor the patients by priority. Determine the needs and capabilities. You should be prepared to transfer the patient to a definitive care if facilities to treat the patient are not available in the hospital you are treating. Assure optimal and safe patient care. The primary focus of ATLS is on the first star of trauma management, rapid assessment and resuscitation. So in this COVID era, no need to emphasize everyone follows these protocols. So standard precautions take up must even if there is no COVID pandemic. So it starts with the cap, gown, gloves, mask, shoe covers, goggles and the face shield. Initial assessment of a trauma operation. It starts at the site of injury itself. It from the preparation, triage, primary survey, resuscitation, the adjuncts to primary survey and resuscitation. You, at this stage, again, you can consider the need for patient transfer depending on the condition of the patient. And if all everything is going according to plan, go for the secondary survey, then the adjuncts to secondary survey, then continued post resuscitation monitoring and re-evaluation, and finally, the definitive care. This preparation, again, this starts the site of injury itself, where the accident has happened. It is This is called the pre-hospital phase. There are three important things that has looked at this phase. First thing is airway maintenance. It is the paramedical person, he should be able to manage the airway of this patient. What is feasible till, according to his capacity till the patient reaches the hospital. Second is the control of external bleeding. There is a source of bleeding, it has to be controlled. Control of external bleeding and shock here. And finally, the immobilization of these patients. All these three things has to be done at the time site of injury itself as the patient is being transported in the ambulance from the site of injury to the hospital itself. Transport the patient to the immediate or uh, the closest appropriate facility where available. The time of injury, events related to the injury and the patient history is taken simultaneously and they are handed over to the doctors at the hospital. Now, what does the hospital do? So, the, how does a trauma setup works? 
Here, as soon as the patient is being picked up in the ambulance, the paramedical person informs a nearest trauma center that this patient is going to come here. At that stage, you should have, the paramedical person should be able to tell what is the condition of the patient, whether it is a polytrauma is need active, should be activated, whether the patient is hemodynamically stable, whether his airway is compromised, or whether the neurosurgeon head injury is there, so the neurosurgeon should be present in the site of injuring cell. This is going to help us in the advanced planning of the arriving patient. And as soon as the patient comes into the hospital, there should be a smooth handover from the pre-hospital phase. The paramedical person takes hands over the patient to the team leader who is going to be the part of the polytrauma team or the ER doctor who is going to this one. Here in the resuscitation area, the patient is received. Airway equipment should have been checked before the patient comes into the hospital. Warm intravenous crystallites are started, two IV lines are started preferably in the forearm wide bore IV candlers and use warm intravenous crystallite solutions. Polytrauma is activated when you anticipate more specialties need to be involved. What is a polytrauma team is actually? It is usually comprises of different doctors from different specialties, a surgeon, anesthetist or orthopedician. Usually the neurosurgeons are available on call and they should be able to come if there is a sudden slightest suspicion of head injury. There should be one team leader who should be coordinating the team. Here this team leader gives instructions to all the team members and it should be followed so scrupulously. Then you should have some power nurse should be able to do that entering data, entering data alone. You can see this is how a polytrauma patient is being transported into the ER room. You can see the patient is having a, a backboard. You can see a cervical collar. You can see the patient is already intubated. This is how all this, you can see all the persons are wearing a gown or the gloves.